Legs on a Monday is nasty work. But if you wanna be different, you gotta work different. Big Lottie gang, what's good? Throw the fours up in the chat and welcome back to a new workout mini series. Disclaimer, if you want full understanding of this series before we move forward, please keep watching so I don't have to keep answering the same questions over and over again. As of right now, a lot of y'all have already seen Big Guard Bootcamp 2.0 and our Explosive Training Camp series. And some of y'all may know that I play professional basketball in Canada for the Montreal Tundra right now. And my schedule is a little bit different from y'all's. So full disclaimer right now, this is not a full blown workout advice series and this is not a week in the life worth of workouts. As of right now, I'm a little over a month outside of training camp for the upcoming season. So I've made the final change to my workout split to get ready to get back in professional basketball playing shape. Now beforehand, I had other training priorities to take advantage of because I have a longer off season. Now my whole workout schedule has been revamped to maintain all the muscle that I put on so far. At the very least, maintain my explosiveness, but ideally add a little bit more and increase my overall stamina and muscular endurance, along with factoring in my mobility and stability work and getting my body back to being in season in shape. Now don't get me wrong, we weighing around 215 right now, we still athletic as hell, but there's levels to this shit. So as I've said before, this is not a full blown advice series. I'm simply sharing the part of my journey that I'm in right now with y'all. And if you want the other workouts that I've recommended beforehand, the playlists are gonna be linked in the description of the video and they'll pop up in the corner of the video. Now that we got that out the way, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and turn on the notifications so you don't miss another video. And I'll be mic'd up the whole time to give y'all a further breakdown of what this series is gonna look like moving forward. That being said, tap in and let's get to work. Yeah, we definitely switching shit up for this workout series because we're starting off with legs on a Monday. And that's just so crazy to me. We gonna get through it no matter what. We still getting the proper warm up in with our resistance band and our isometrics. Remember, it's dynamic warm-ups before we get into our lifts. Static stretching relaxes your muscles. Dynamic warm-ups make sure your muscles are ready to react. That way we can move this heavy ass weight. Ooh. I forgot to mention earlier, as always, the workouts will be typed out in the description. And just for further clarification, the reason I'm telling y'all that this isn't really an advice series is because at the time that I'm uploading this, a lot of you are already starting your own preseason workouts or going through your season already. And this is not an in-season workout split or something that I think that you should add onto your current training regimen if you're already going through preseason workouts with your team. This is the final month of high intensity training before I go through my own preseason workouts with my own team. I'll still give my normal explanation of my workout so you at least understand the purpose, but just know moving forward that I warned y'all and I did not not recommend this. The ideal time for a split like this on your own time is during the last stretch of your off season, not in addition to your preseason workouts. And I'll find different ways to make the series more entertaining moving forward. Starting to get cold out. So y'all about to see me wearing more and more clothes. I need to, I need to upgrade my workout wardrobe though. Been trying my best not to spend no more money, but Gymshark keep dropping more and more heat. Gymshark, send a sponsorship. That way I don't got to break the bank on it. <laughs> Ah, can't skip our isometrics. Since I've been doing these isometrics regularly, I do them before every leg day as a warm up. I've had so much less knee pain. It's taking me less time to warm up, reaping all the benefits that I wanted. Shout out Nocta coming through with the gear though. Before I get into my heavy movements for the day, I'm actually gonna start with some good mornings. Strengthen the hamstrings in the length and position, and also strengthen in the lower back. I actually recommend these for all lifters, hoopers, athletes in general. Can't go wrong when it comes to the benefits of these. And it's not even about the weight that we move. Don't get me wrong, you can progressively overload it if you just need a further challenge moving forward but I already mentioned what the benefits are and that's the main goal. It's more about the movement than it is the amount of weight that we move in. For all y'all who complain about lower back pain, knee pain, these are the preventative measures that we take. <sighs> Super setting them with just some regular pull-ups. We don't just do pull-ups on upper body days because when we're squatting, where's the weight sitting? On our back. A couple of sets of pull-ups before every workout will go a long way. <laughs> Controlling the entire movement too. Full range of motion, controlling on the eccentric.
I'm getting a good sweat in already. Let's keep it going. We're going heavy on squats today. Just because we're switching up the workout split doesn't mean we aren't going to have our days of lifting heavy while we still can, because we're not going to have too many OD heavy lifts during the season. Less time to recover during the season. <laughs> So those in-season workouts are mainly about maintaining. Heavy emphasis on mobility, stability, balance, all of that good stuff. Don't get me wrong, we're gonna reap those same benefits during this workout program, but we gotta take advantage of the time that we have to go hard in the weight room. Ah. Quick little 12 reps. Don't wanna burn out, but we wanna make sure that our joints are good to go. Now for all y'all who be seeing the full depth squats and complain, oh my knees, knee pain. If you did your isometrics, proper stretches after your workouts, dynamic warmups before your lifts, generally taking care of your body, you wouldn't have those problems. Unless you're doing all those things and you're still having knee pain, maybe you got inflammation, maybe you got Osgood, you need to take a break from your workouts. If something is hurting, don't keep doing shit that's going to hurt it. And if it doesn't heal, go see a doctor. Too many of y'all are relying on advice from TikTok when y'all have serious problems. As creators, influencers, whatever you want to call us, no matter how much education we have, all we can do is give general advice because we don't understand everybody's personal situation. That's the purpose of going to see a doctor. All these pieces of advice, are just tips. It's the same as Googling your symptoms when you're sick and then trying a few at-home remedies. And if it doesn't get better, you go see a doctor. Same shit when it comes to this shit. Please take care of your bodies. 225. Again, don't want to burn out. These are lightweights. Get the blood flowing. Them high reps, even though these aren't working sets, we get to benefit from a little bit of muscular endurance in the long run when we do shit like this on a regular basis. Don't think that you're just gonna reap all the benefits coming in and doing this shit once. Consistency and discipline. Huh. Move up to 315 for the working sets. Time for the knee sleeves to go on. And I don't use no OD, you know, stiff legged knee sleeves that you see some of the equipped power lifters using. I wear knee sleeves for my heavier squats, simply for compression, take the pressure off the joints, and that's it. Part of staying safe in the process. And when we move up even heavier than this, the belt goes on. That way we can brace into the belt, keep everything stable. Ah, one more set, four, five, for three reps. Let's go get the belt. Legs on a Monday is nasty work. But if you want to be different, you got to work different. <sighs> now the thing is, with getting back into playing shape, this isn't the only workout of the day. We're not done yet, but we're starting off with our heavy lifts just to maintain the same strength benefits because we're going to be doing a lot of cardio later on. Always want to do cardio last when we're talking about high intensity cardio. 
because the fatigue from cardio affects your weightlifting more than the other way around. This kind of ties into what I've said in earlier videos as I've been uploading workouts about training through fatigue. And not only are we getting our heaviest lift of the day out of the way early, it's arguably our toughest lift of the entire workout split. I choose to think of it this way. I'm taking the first day for the most intense full range of motion training day specifically for my legs, making sure that my muscles and joints are ready to handle all the movements for the rest of the week. Any red flags to come up during the workout split, rather them happen on day one. That way I can take the rest of that week to recover rather than not knowing and possibly making it worse by going through the other movements. It gives me a way to adjust moving forward. Drop the weight all the way down to 155 for these weighted jump squats, leaving the knee sleeves on, just so we have that compression and protection around the knees. Three sets, five reps, nothing crazy. Now I did explain before that this isn't gonna be a full week in the life of workouts, a little over a month outside of training camp for my professional season. So I'm gonna be recording these workouts throughout the month. Y'all will get to see how my body changes, how my performance changes, how my movements on the court change. But remember, I'm not a bodybuilder, I'm not a power lifter, I'm just a hooper who likes to pick up heavy shit. Meaning that I don't lift for aesthetics and I don't solely lift for strength. Think of me as the ultimate hybrid athlete. That's my goal, to be the ultimate hybrid athlete. Ah, almost done, almost done. Heated calf raises, but here we're trying to spend most of the majority of the time in the stretch position, prioritizing growth of the calves and ankle stability. This is not the only thing that's gonna help you jump higher, but we are strengthening that last point of extension. Hips, knees, ankles. And y'all know we gotta finish out this workout the right way. Core, we cannot neglect the core. This is the foundation of what keeps us explosive. Now the good thing with these leg raises is that we get to work the top of the quad muscle that's often neglected. This is the part of the quad muscle that's connected to the hip flexor. Every time you lift your leg, whether it's to walk, run, or jump, this is the part of the quad muscle that's doing a lot of the work. Two sets of failure, controlling it the whole way. Let's stretch and get out of here. We cannot neglect our general health and mobility. A lot of it is going to come from stretching. It is after the workout, so now we're going through our static stretching routine, making sure our muscles is relaxed and ready to recover. All right, y'all, a few hours have gone by. Now we're back in the gym for our second and third workouts of the day. Yes, you heard that right, second and third. Now, normally I would say this is just a regular two a day, but we're actually devoting a decent amount of time to cardio, trying to build that muscular endurance and overall stamina for training camp. Now, since we had such a high intensity leg day, we're actually just gonna keep it light impact wise and stay on the bike 30 to 45 minutes. And then right after, we're gonna go and finish with some court work, focusing more on movements rather than being explosive, trying to come off fluid. I'll see that once we get there. After as heavy of a lift as we had earlier, definitely wanted to opt for a lower impact just to save our joints, but still reap all the benefits of endurance and stamina moving forward. This is a hell of a way to start off the week. But if you wanna be different, you gotta work different. Huh. After 40 minutes, just barely hit 10 miles. Gotta get that number up. But now, it's time to head to the court.
Now, I didn't mic up for the court session in this workout. We started off with the heavy ball, focusing on change of direction as we get into our jumper off the dribble. And today's focus was scoring in the mid range, fighting through that fatigue and keeping our form consistent. We want the footwork to be quick yet fluid, along with limiting hitches and wasted movement. Now, y'all know I keep it 100 on the channel. The fatigue is a big factor, but I still got a good amount of work to do. Just because we're making or missing shots doesn't mean that we're neglecting the minor details. Elevation on the jumper, holding the follow through, getting the ball into our shot pocket quick, and holding on to the ball during ball handling, obvious. Mistakes are okay during the workouts. If you're not making mistakes, you're not pushing yourself hard enough. You're not supposed to be comfortable throughout your workouts. The key is learning from them and making the proper adjustments on the fly. Remember, this is just the first day of the new workout split. So we may not look too bad right now, but we're gonna look way better by the end of the month. I'm excited to take y'all on this journey with me. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and turn on them notifications so you don't miss another video. Till next time, y'all know the vibes from me. It's peace, love, and happiness to everybody. Continue to stay safe and continue to stay on the grind. Big Lottie Gang, fours up, we out. Oh, and feel free to enjoy the last bit of clips before the video ends.